Donna. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to Dean Ellenberger. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Frank, for the very generous introduction. It is a pleasure to, uh, to add my welcome to the others you've already received. It's, uh, it's quite hard for me to believe it's already been nine months since my arrival in Camrose and that an entire school year has flown by. I must confess it's been a whirlwind. Uh, I'm still learning names and could end up being embarrassed tonight, but uh, hope to do fairly well. Uh, and it's been an incredibly fun year. There are three major things I would say that I've found across this year, and they all have to do with people. First of all, as I've come to know people here on campus, I've discovered Augustana is a campus community that's blessed with incredibly dedicated faculty and staff who take an enormous pride in their relationships with students. I have observed faculty and staff like Petra Seligny, Craig Wentland, Neil Hove, Janet Wasalius, Faisal Kirumura, Blaine Gustal, Glynis Hood, Milton Schlosser, Rob Ford, Melanie Matho, Karsten Mundell, Randy Hendrickson, Sarah Treganing, and these are just a few representative, uh, representative faculty and staff of much larger numbers of dedicated people. And what I see they all have in common is the extent to which education and the support of young adults is truly a calling. In other words, it's what gives meaning to their lives. It is at the center of their lives. It's where they draw meaning. I've also discovered a large community of neighbors, friends, alumni, and generous donors that truly take pride in the campus, indeed even feel a sense of ownership toward the campus, and recognize the important role that Augustana plays in building social capital and in contributing to the quality of life here in Camrose, in the surrounding region, and indeed across rural Alberta. And thirdly, I've discovered we have fabulous students. Students who exhibit levels of camaraderie and school spirit that other campuses should envy. Their school spirit for me is exemplified by two events, one shortly after my arrival and, uh, and one just recently. Uh, very soon after I arrived, we had move-in day for the new first year students who were arriving, moving in to the first year residence hall. Our students were out there cheering every automobile that arrived, competing to carry the most refrigerators. I only carried one. Uh, I think the winner carried over 20 refrigerators. Uh, and welcoming warmly every student and every family. The more recent event was just a week or so ago, and that was color night to honor our very successful athletes uh, from, this past, from this past year. And what was most impressive to me at Color Night was the way in which our students cheered for one another. Not just hockey players cheering for hockey players. Basketball players cheering for hockey players. Volleyball players uh, cheering for curling athletes. The level of camaraderie, the level of support was truly impressive. So let me talk a, a bit more about my discoveries from this past year. I want to first focus on what I consider some of our core strengths here at Augustana, and then talk about some of our priorities as we look toward the future. As far as core strengths go, uh, I'm drawn to four particular points of pride. One is the commitment to diversity on this campus. This year at Augustana, we set an enrollment for the number of Aboriginal students who are enrolled here, and that enrollment has doubled over the past three years. 
That truly is a record to be proud of. We continue to bring in large numbers of international students as represented by the flags outside this chapel. And next year, we'll be launching a new bridge program, which will help us increase even more the numbers of international students and serve them well through English as second language programs. A second point of pride, community service learning. This year, we placed over 350 Augustana students in community service responsibilities with organizations uh, and, uh, and municipalities in this region. Community service learning is core to our mission because it helps us commit to place-based learning. An important aspect of liberal education is preparing students for their lives as citizens. And this is the place where they have an opportunity to practice the skills of engaged citizenship and to develop the values that are so important to engaged citizenship. So the community beyond the boundaries of the campus becomes an important laboratory and an important place where our students can make valuable contributions. Internationalization is a third uh, strength and point of pride here at Augustana. I don't have the figures yet for the students who will convocate uh, early in June, but I can tell you that our most recent figures, last year's convocation, had over 30% of our students graduating with a meaningful international experience under their belt. At least one, many, two or three. Uh, our students are literally going all over the world and earning academic credit through studies in diverse locations on virtually every continent. In addition, we're working hard to establish more international connections. This past year, we established a new memorandum of understanding with the Universidad de Oriente in Cuba. We developed new international courses in China and Estonia. We have a new collaborative arrangement in outdoor education with colleagues from Japan. And our choir, in a couple weeks, will be taking a performance tour to Hungary. And that's just a small sample of the new international activities. A full list uh, would have taken too much time. Finally, a fourth area of pride, a fourth area of strength, and this is one that Frank mentioned, undergraduate research. And as, and as much as they're doing good work on North Campus in this area, I believe our commitment to undergraduate research here at Augustana is our comparative advantage because the student-faculty ratios on this campus, particularly in upper-level courses, allow us to provide students the kinds of experiences that most university students can't access until they're studying at the master's level. Our student academic conference, Frank mentioned, included 128 participants this spring, over 50 papers, 35 poster presentations, many with joint authors. And in the future, our faculty are committed to focusing on a tiered approach to undergraduate research. How can we introduce even first-year students to the joys of inquiry? That's a question all of us are asking and collectively answering. As we look toward the future then, what are some of our priorities for continuing to build a quality experience for students here? Mostly what we're working on has been informed by Augustana's unit review. This was a quality review of our operation uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, the reviewers were here in February of 2011. They came from universities across North America, and they pretty much did an audit of Augustana. And here's what they concluded. Quote, Augustana is on the right path and should push ahead confidently. That was good news for all of us. 
uh, and, a, uh, and a morale booster, certainly. But they also identified some priority areas where we might, uh, where we might focus some attention. The first was further diversification of our enrollment base and enrollment growth. Now, I was already bragging about diversity, but our unit reviewers recognized that a continued commitment to enhancing diversity is important to institutional quality. Our students need to engage seriously with others whose backgrounds are very different from their own. In addition, our aspiration is to grow the enrollment of Augustana from its current approximately 1,000 students to at least an initial goal of about 1,200 students over the next five years. For me, enrollment growth here at Augustana is not just a size issue. Enrollment growth is also a quality issue. With greater numbers, we can build a critical mass in, acad in, in academic programs. We can support a greater diversity of faculty, a greater range of courses. In other words, more academic opportunities for students. And still at 1,200, we can maintain the personal attention that is so important on this campus. Uh, while growing the enrollment, uh, we also recognize we need to be making investments in academic support services, building stronger programs in career planning and tutoring, in supports for mathematics and writing skills, and here Frank Robinson is an important ally. A second area of focus that the unit reviewers suggested is strengthening our liberal arts identity. This is something we need to do a better job communicating about, both internally and externally. My guess is if we were to ask our uh, 65 some odd faculty for their definitions of what it means to be a liberal arts focused campus, we would get 65 different answers. That's not all bad because diversity in faculty thought and diversity in faculty opinion is part of our strength. But we also, at least to some extent, need to be on the same page communicating both internally and externally the meaning, the value, and the purpose of liberal arts. I think to a person we on campus believe this is the best preparation for citizenship, the best preparation for leadership. It is the best foundation we can build for young people uh, so that they can go on and lead personally meaningful lives. And perhaps paradoxically, it is the best launch pad for successful careers. Because if all we do as a university is provide students a narrow training in a narrow field, we are ill-serving them for a future in which the Canadian Conference Board, the Department of Labor in the United States, and others predict they will have at least half a dozen different careers, not different jobs, different careers. How will they navigate a landscape of rapid change like that? And how can we assure that they're prepared to make meaningful contributions? We can't train them for the future. We need to educate them and cultivate a lifelong love of learning. Uh, that's in part what it means to be a liberal arts campus. But the liberal arts we also know are to some extent countercultural in this day and age. Um, many focus on the word liberal and think it has a political meaning. What liberal means, for the most part, is an education that is liberating, that liberates students from narrow ways of thinking, from parochialisms, uh, and, uh, and, from, uh, and from the narrow thinking that characterizes any discipline as we 
focus instead on a broad education that enables them to converse with students and faculty from multiple disciplines, multiple perspectives. This summer, our faculty as an entire group will be engaging in the common reading of a single book, a book called Why Choose the Liberal Arts by the former Dean of Arts and Sciences at the University of Notre Dame, Mark Roche. Try to imagine engaging the entire faculty on the North Campus in a common reading. Differences of scale simply make that impossible. Here at Augustana, we're going to read a book together and then ask, what does it mean for us and how, based on that conversation that we have about why choose the liberal arts, how can we more effectively communicate to our own students and to prospective students the extraordinary value that this kind of education has? And how can we help our graduates more effectively communicate about the value added here at Augustana as they present their credentials to potential employers. In strengthening our liberal arts identity, we also recognize, and so did our unit reviewers, that we need to focus more on students' learning outcomes. We know pretty well what we want them to learn in their majors. We've identified certain skills that we hope every student will develop at Augustana, things like writing skills, speaking skills, critical thinking skills, information literacy skills. But how do we know if we're doing our job well? Assessment is a critical obligation in post-secondary education today, and we need to ask not only what are the outcomes we're focused on for student learning, but what gives us confidence that in fact we're achieving those outcomes? And where perhaps are we not doing as well as we might? So a commitment to assessment is also a commitment to continuous quality improvement. And that's something that we have to weave into the culture and into the routines of work life here at Augustana. And as we gradually build our enrollment, the other way we will strengthen our liberal arts identity is by gradually building the faculty complement because we do have some critical needs in certain academic areas. Lastly, the, uh, the third area of focus that our unit reviewers asked us to pay attention to was infrastructure enhancements. We have the beautiful facility here with the forum and the library that have transformed our campus, but we can't stop with those improvements. And in fact, as Frank recognized, we're, uh, we're actively working on new improvements. Uh, one thing we've completed this year uh, is an exercise called the General Space Program. The General Space Program tries to envision the kinds of spaces that Augustana will need five years from now. Now that's a tall order. There's not much about the world that, we, that any of us can, can successfully predict five years out. But with the General Space Program, we're trying to predict our academic needs, our, uh, our rate of enrollment growth, and we're trying to envision what this campus will need to look like. That general space program, once approved, and we're bringing it to, uh, we're bringing it to uh, the necessary board committee on June 7th, that general space program, once approved, will allow us to develop then a business case for the new science building that we've been talking about for a long time and for the needed renovations of the classroom building. So that's been a key priority and one that, uh, that I hope there will be lots more news to be reporting about soon. We've also begun talking with facilities staff on, on North Campus about renovations to Founders Hall. As all of you know, Founders Hall is our iconic building. What I have said to Tim Hansen and to others who work in Founders Hall is that Founders Hall should be the living room into which we welcome 
every visitor to campus, every prospective student, every prospective family. And like your living rooms at home, it should be a, a lovely and comfortably appointed space. In renovating Founders Hall, we will also make it handicap accessible. This is, as I said, our iconic building, and it's important we not only preserve it, but that we integrate it into the fabric of our community and that, we, and that we're able to take great pride in it, and that we have confidence it will last for another century. We're also committed as we look at infrastructure enhancements to campus beautification. We're going to be adding a gazebo this summer, and every year, cosmetic improvements are made to the campus. I'm very grateful to our physical facilities staff who have joined with me in trying to improve what I came to campus calling the money walk. The money walk is the tour that we take prospective students and families on. Are they going to invest their money in an education at this institution? First impressions really count, and those are impressions not just of our people, but impressions of our physical environment. So we need to make sure our, uh, our, our physical facilities are up to par. And then, of course, there's the Camrose Performing Arts Center. Some days, I think, the Performing Arts Center has taken up about half of my time this year. Now that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I can tell you it's been very rewarding working with representatives from the city of Camrose in trying to realize this vision. And we are getting very, very close. We still have some I's to dot and T's to cross on legal paperwork, uh, and we still have some negotiations to finish up with potential contractors but I am cautiously optimistic that we will soon be inviting all of you back for a sod-turning ceremony here on campus. All of our work here at Augustana depends on lots of allies. We have important allies on North Campus in President Indira Samarasekara and in Provost Carl Amrine. In fact, it was Carl's genuine commitment to the liberal arts in this kind of setting at a small residential rural campus that convinced me that this was the place I should take my career uh, in, the, in these next years. Uh, Dean Frank Robinson is also an important ally and works very closely with us. Internally, we have a number of allies who are really already important parts of our fabric but their work is also guided by dedicated external boards. And I'm thinking here of the people internally who are involved with and externally who help support our chaplaincy, the people who, uh, who support the Chester Ronning Center for the study of religion and public life, and all of the people who support the Alberta S Center for Sustainable Rural Communities. These three entities are, part of our, are important parts of our core operation, and they help define Augustana as a distinct and a unique place. Augustana also depends on very close relationships with other faculties. Uh, originally, I was, going to, uh, I was going to introduce all of you to Anita Moltzon, the Dean of Nursing. I'm not sure if Anita has made it here. She was tied up on North Campus in the, uh, in the Emergency Dean's Council meeting today. Uh, I do understand that Mark Arnal from the Faculté Saint-Jean has managed to make it down. Mark, are you here? Mark's in the back. Mark is a wonderful ally for, uh, for Augustana. We, uh, we both uh, oversee uh, campuses that are separate from the North Campus have distinct identities and commitments to liberal education. And it has been wonderful uh, to work with Mark as a colleague. Uh, I mentioned Anita Moltzon, the Dean of Nursing, because as most of you know, Augustana hosts a very successful after-degree nursing program here on our campus. Similarly, 
we have close relationships with the Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine. Our physical therapy program here at Augustana is thriving. And we all know that rural communities desperately need people who are committed to health care in small town settings. Through our collaboration with the faculties of rehab medicine and nursing, we can deliver on that need, we can deliver on that dream. The other faculty that we work very closely with here at Augustana is the Faculty of Education. And I'm very grateful to Dean Fern Snart for all that she has contributed to our evolving programs. This past year, uh, we launched a joint uh, Bachelors of Science, Bachelors of Education program with the Faculty of Education, and we plan to be in conversation with Fern about other collaborations in other areas of the curriculum. Augustana also depends on collaboration with a variety of partner institutions. Uh, this year, we signed new memoranda of understanding to enable block transfer for students from both Grand Prairie Regional College and from Red Deer College. It's important that we, uh, that we define ourselves as a place where students at those institutions can finish a four-year degree. We also have important ties with the Battle River School Division and many hopes of enhancing those ties over coming years. I've mentioned the Performing Arts Center, but we also collaborate with Camrose County, which is a partner in the Performing Arts Center, on the development of a research station at Miquelon Lake. We've raised about $150,000 toward, toward, the, toward the approximate $200,000 or $225,000 we need to install that research station at Miquelon Lake and the Parks Department is an important ally with us on that. All of these relationships give me a lot of confidence for the future. If there's any cause for concern, I would say it's mostly related to, to finances. As most of you know, uh, all of higher education uh, has faced challenges. Uh, our budgets are not sufficient to fund continued growth, and in fact, we're facing uh, budget cuts as we look toward next year. So my challenge as the dean and executive officer is to try to maintain momentum, is to enhance quality even during times of financial difficulty. And of course, part of my challenge is to make a case for increased investment in Augustana to make that case to potential donors, to the University of Alberta Central Administration, and to the provincial government. Ultimately, I believe this comes down to making a case for our unique mission as a residential undergraduate liberal arts institution. And it also comes down to demonstrating the extraordinary value that Augustana has to the University of Alberta and to the entire province of Alberta. In my work, I draw comfort in knowing that I can count on all of you as allies, as friends, and I'm very grateful for the support that you provide Augustana, and thanks for coming tonight.